I've been slowly interrailing around Europe for the past few months and had to take advantage of how well connected and easy it is to do Italy by train. Only a two hour journey from Florence, Venice was top of my list as somewhere I'd never been before and home to the Venice Biennale. So a short art history lesson, the Biennale is one of the most important international art exhibitions dating back to 1895. It's been called the Olympics of the art world with over 50 countries represented this year in exhibitions and national pavilions showcasing some of the best contemporary art. Historically, the Biennale has a long list of acclaimed participants from Gustav Klimt, Pablo Picasso, the collection of Peggy Guggenheim, all the way to the likes of Kusama Yayoi and Anish Kapoor. This year was our first time attending and with only 24 hours in the city, we were ready to see as much art as we could. Guys, I don't know if it's because it's cloudy or it's like 11 a.m. This is empty. I think it's so quiet. Lucky I find. Ciao, <laughs> Guys, we checked into our hotel. <laughs> Ciao. Look, Ciao, look how gorgeous. We got, She's cute. We got She's little cute. angels looking over us. We have this like little living area. They gave us wine, which we will be drinking later. And we have two windows overlooking the canal. Like what? <gasps> What a dream! Oh my gosh. POA, we're going to freshen up and then go to the Biennale. The, the Arsenale? Arsenale first. I think, today. Arsenale first today, and then tomorrow we're going to go to the pavilions. I feel like such a tourist here. It doesn't look Palladian to me. I think the facade's Palladian. Like, Ciao, Bella. Ciao. Florentina, take Venice. <laughs> 36 hours on. 36 hours, counting down, what are we on now? Oh mm. god, I didn't even know. Well, we spent a lot of hours looking at art, um, which I cannot complain about. I just didn't know what to expect going into the Arsenale. I don't know that much about contemporary art at all. I knew the exhibition was going to be big, but I didn't realize how vast and almost overwhelming it would be. There was nearly too much to be able to take in and see in one sitting. What is really cool is that the curator, Cecilia Alemani, has prioritized showing works by female and gender non-conforming artists. And as she puts it, deliberately rethinking man's centrality in the history of art and within contemporary culture. It definitely made me think of the nearly all male artists I've seen in museums from Paris to Barcelona and Florence. bathroom break but do you see how long this building is this is all full of the lock of dreams exhibit which is insane um and there's even stuff like up above me 
it's so beautiful. Definitely have a few favorites, which I will include, of course. Um, and it's not even that busy, I think, because it runs from April through until November. People can come and go at their own pace. But I almost cried when I first came in. <laughs> We just finished seeing the Milk of Dreams exhibit. I think we were walking around for around two hours, and then there's a few countries that aren't in the Giardini that are here, which we'll see after. But this is my first experience of it, and it's actually just so inspiring. And I was like so overwhelmed at the start because I didn't realize how big. take you down into a peatland from Tierra del Fuego in Chile. You have about three minutes of light time before the... Well, then during the night they're also... they have light time. this dress in the Santo Spirito market for five years but it was a midi we cut it we did a very rogue sewing job last night to bring the mesh up um, however I did forget to tag this part so we'll see if we make it work so OOTD from Nervous Killer hair dress vintage. vintage shoes cheap from Florence falling apart face <laughs> my own god Running a little bit late. Oh, yeah. Oh, late. Oh, I We didn't have a lot of time to see much else apart from the Biennale, but knew that we couldn't miss on the Peggy Guggenheim collection. It has so many pieces that I remember from lectures and essays. This beautiful Koenig, early drip paintings by Pollock, Picasso's, Miro's, Kandinsky's, all set within a beautiful canal side palazzo. Need 
with that little pick-me-up. I know, we need a coffee there before we hit the Biennale. We are arted. Alright. But the pick-me-up yeah. was so oh. amazing. It was. <laughs> I knew you were gonna. Whenever I saw the Kandinsky, I was like, oh my god, no, I just gonna cry. It was so gorgeous. It was so beautiful. Oh, like I wanted to see them for years. Wow. Do you know what a morning? That? No, that's what I was like to you. Oh I was like, like, I don't want to know what's there. Yeah, I just want to be surprised. Surprise. I know what a morning. What a start to the day. We got a water taxi over to the Giardini, where most of the national pavilions are located. Even after food and coffee, we were pretty tired, so I actually didn't film as much as I thought I did. But here are some of the standouts, the hyper-realistic, unsettling Danish pavilion, the Polish Patrick textiles representing Roma identity and Renaissance iconography, and the beautifully simple videos of the Belgian pavilion documenting children's games around the world. It really was a mental roller coaster going from one installation to the next and even though we were pretty burnt out by the end it only makes me more excited to come back again in two years and do it even better so short and sweet but this has really been one of the highlights of the summer and spending it with lois who you get equally excited if not more by the endless galleries and exhibits made it all the more special um, and you know, art simply is just amazing in all its forms and ways of feeling. This weekend really reminded me of how much I just want to create things that people can feel. Mm -hmm.